Let's go. The Satram of Heron wants to know why you've decided to leave the city with your kindred, your servants, and your possessions. If someone in the city has offended you, the Satram will punish him and do you justice. But he is begging you not to leave. You have returned, yet the god already knows your desire. you see that Abram runs away because he's afraid of the god of Aaron? In the past, he used to offer him sacrifices and weep in his temple while asking for his blessings. And now he is abandoning him, abandoning his city and offending him. Abram, you have to turn back. The god of Haran is commanding you. You won't disobey him, right? Don't you fear the great block? The god of Haran doesn't frighten anyone. He's a god of stone. Everybody knows that. Did you hear this blasphemy? For you, Lieutenant, can you reassure your master and satrap that I am going to the land of Canaan for commerce? I don't have anything against him or against the city, and if I get the chance, I will return. Meanwhile, I'd like you to take this gift to your revered master from me and my kindred. I am sure he will appreciate it. I'm sure that the satrap will appreciate it. You may now go on your way, Abram. Whenever you want, you may always return to the city of Haran. You will always be welcome. Shame on you! The god of Haran will punish you! Here's the master! I hope soon we can rest. It's been a long journey. Aren't you afraid of the revenge of the god of Haran? That god is of stone, woman. It is of stone, just stone. Why should we fear him? Why did you leave Haran? You are a rich man already. What's the point of getting richer? I look for a wealth that you ignore, Lot. When you find it, will you make me your partner? If you want, you can experience that wealth too. I want to know about that god with whom I've seen you speak to at night. What do you want to know, woman? Will that god keep his promise? Will he give me a child? You will see for yourself, woman.
Do you see that stretch of dark clouds as well? I certainly see it. It's only a storm that's drawing near. It'll be here soon. I'm scared, Abram. Never believe that a god of stone can lift the winds. Abram, I beg you, let's go back. Who watches over us is a high and invisible god, woman, an almighty god. Pray for him, then call him to save us. to stay in this land. It's the land of Canaan, but the moment has not yet come for us to stop. Look, this might be the land of Shechem. We will return to this place later when our trip reaches the end. When would that be? When Jehovah wants. Where are you, my lord? Your servant is waiting for you. Abram. Ah, here I am, my lord. Did you see the beauty of the land you are in now? I will stay here if you command me. Unto thy seed will I give this land. Then it's true. I will have a descent. I am glad you're telling this to me for the second time, my lord. A man is nothing if he doesn't have his own descent, my lord. Nothing. Your descent will be numerous as the stars of the heavens and the sands of the sea. I am in your hands, my lord. I will build an altar on this land, my lord, and I will offer sacrifices for your blessed name. The hand of God is taking care of us. Let's go. Here, too, there is no water, sir. It is the eighth well we find dry. We must find water whenever it you takes. You said that the God would take care of us and protect us. Jehovah is waiting for us to prove our faith. Then that's what he's waiting for you to prove as well, woman. There's nothing left for us to do but go to the great river of the Nile. The river has never run dry. 
Sir, look down. Here are marauders. They're killing everybody. What should we do? We'll continue on our way. The men are more exhausted and thirsty than the beasts. What happened happened, and nobody can change that. Lot, you're cruel. I will never refrain from helping whoever is in danger and pain, even if it costs me my life. Go now. Command the men to follow me. Who gives us the right to take away the gift of life you have given him, my lord? There's a girl over there. But she's only a child. She was born a maidservant. What will I call her? Call her Hagger. So you'll now be called Hagger. Come with me. He must be powerful indeed, the god who lives in this temple. The temple is great, but the god who lives in it is still made of stone. Why don't you go and ask him the grace of giving you child? I will never ask grace from a god of stone. The most high god who speaks to me, mighty and invisible, is alive, and I know it. But then why hasn't he given you a child yet, Abram? He has promised, and I have put myself into his hands. You're a stubborn man, Abram, a stubborn man. At the end of this city is a big market. There we will sell our carpets and livestock. We'll make good deals. Why did you bring such a huge carpet? Here it doesn't fit in any house. It can only fit in your palace. I brought it so you can buy it. I brought it for you. You're a cunning merchant. What's your name? My name is Abram. I come from Haran. I'll buy your carpet, merchant. It's very beautiful. Sarai, Sarai! Who's calling me? You found favor with the pharaoh, noble lady. Me? He barely saw me. Don't be surprised, lady. The honorable pharaoh is like an eagle. But I cannot go to him. As soon as he returned to the palace, he asked me to bring him the sister of a merchant named Sarai. And he added, I've never in my life seen a smile like hers. I want her to smile for me. And if I refuse? If you won't come with me, I will have to kill you.
I have come to take back my sister who was taken by the Pharaoh for himself this evening. Don't worry, my friend. The Pharaoh will drown you with gifts. I don't want gifts. Tell the Pharaoh that I cannot leave her to him because she is too dear to me. He always pays high prices for whatever he takes, and in your case it won't be any different. But I don't want gifts! Not to worry. He'll send them. You've lost her. Let's go back to our tent. My lord, listen to your servant. I am Abram, and I am desperate. Yes, Abram. What is in your heart? Listen to your servant, lord. My lord, listen. Don't allow the pharaoh to harm Sarah, my lord. It's not for you to tell me what to do. It's not for you, Abram. No, my lord, it's not for me to do. Why didn't you say immediately that Sarah is your wife? Because I was afraid the pharaoh would kill me and take her from me. You lied, Abram. Please don't leave me. Abram is not my brother, sir. He is my husband. Now you're lying, woman. You're looking for a reason to disobey me. I would never lie to you, great pharaoh. You frighten me terribly. What is happening? The earth shook just now. You, great pharaoh, should fear Abram. And why should I fear old Abram? Because at night he talks to his god. What of it? His god answers him. Ah! That old man! Call that old man! Who, Who should, should we call, call sir? sir? Call Abram the merchant! Your God is loyal to you, Abram. He is also my God because he saved me. after you made the Pharaoh send us away. We will return to the land of Canaan. Famine is over, and we'll go back richer than we were when we left. Not true. In no way. You are not richer. How can you say such nonsense? Can't you count the heads of my herd and the pieces of gold in my coffer? Don't you understand? What you have is not enough, because your God has not given you a child yet. Out of this land, Abram, and don't ever come back if you wish to live. Don't worry, I won't return, my friend. After he crossed the desert of the Negev, Abram returned to the land of Canaan, a land rich in water and fruits more than any other on earth. But immediately, he had to face a lot of enemies to defend the people of his tribe and his possessions. Abram fought and always won with the help of God Almighty, who was always loyal to him. In the name of this loyalty, Abram established a pact with the king Mechizedek. Mechizedek also worshipped Jehovah and was a priest of the same Almighty God to whom Abram was faithful. For this reason, he helped Abram and offered him bread and wine. Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heavens and earth, and blessed be the Most High God who has delivered thine enemies into thy hands. May hand. you, Melchizedek, also be blessed because you worship and fear the Most High God. Many years have passed, and the Most High God was always watching over his faithful servant, Abram. How old is your maidservant? She is 15. She is beautiful, isn't she? 
And I won't be sorry if you do with her what is your right. I can certainly do that, however. You are a good man, Abram. Many years have passed since we left Haran. We obeyed God's will. For many years we've been waiting to have a child. And if the Lord has prevented me from having one, perhaps it's a sign. Join my maidservant now. I'm telling you again, and maybe she will bear your son. Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarah. At the end of ten years that Abram had dwelt in the land of Canaan, Sarah gave Abram her Egyptian maidservant Hagar as his wife. Hagar got pregnant and bore Abram a son. He called him Ishmael. Blessed be the name of the Almighty. May his hand always be over the child he has given me, Ishmael. His name is Ishmael.